Hey guys, my name is Jasmine, and today we're going to be making scribbles. Before we get started, I'm going to tell you what you need. You need at least one piece of paper, Sharpie, doesn't matter what kind of Sharpie, a drawing pencil, which is also a graphite pencil, an eraser, crayons, and colored pencils. So we're going to be creating from squiggles, from uh, scribbles. <laughs> from scribbles and squiggles trying to saying that five times fast but we're gonna also be thinking a lot about how we can kind of exaggerate things so as we're making our scribbles here we're gonna think about um, features like um, your, your eyes your hands things like that and we're gonna include them in our scribbles here we're gonna exaggerate them though so you can kind of really see them how you think you might normally draw things like if you're going to draw a character you might draw it normally like you're kind of doing like a portrait you know it's not um it's not really noticeable it's pretty typical it kind of blends into everything but when you make things um exaggerated you kind of make it bolder so by those two words i mean that we're going to make it noticeable we're going to make it maybe bigger than it typically is we're going to color it a little bit differently we're going to make it noticeable so when you exaggerate things you're making it more noticeable so and that also means making it more bold so i'm actually going to start with i'm going to start with my sharpie i'm going to make my scribbles and when you're making your scribbles try and cover your entire paper if you want you can break it up into like two separate large like squiggle groups but i'm going to make one big scribble that covers my entire paper I'm not thinking too hard about where my squiggles are building, but I am covering my entire paper. So this is my big scribble. And then after that, I'm gonna kind of look at my paper, think about what you see in your paper. If you see like a nose, you can kind of start um, coloring that as how you might color a nose. You can add extra lines if you want and kind of really um, piece your entire paper. This entire piece here is basically and um, assemblage of different things so by that i mean like we're making a puzzle so everything kind of clicks clicks together in that assemblage so i know right here i kind of see a face so i'm going to continue with my sharpie i see an eye here so i'm going to add extra lines for my eyes I'm making this eye a little bit different how I might normally draw eyes. I'm making it very noticeable. I see a nose here. And if you have another thing that you kind of want to play off of that you want to go with, you can do that too. Let's see. It's kind of like a big eye spy, if you guys know what that is. You're basically searching for things that are in your scribbles or what you can make your scribbles into. I see a couple more eyes. So I have like part of a face, I have another part of, of a face, excuse me, wow. Let's see, I'm really focused on trying to see what I can see in my piece here. This might take you a little bit. You can also include other things. You, can, you don't have to focus on faces if you don't wanna focus on faces. You could do like a nature piece where you can focus on like flowers and trees and stuff. But since this is so fluid, since it's so like rounded, I think more so like faces. Because our faces are round, we have like round eyes, we have hands set around it. Speaking of hands, this could be a hand. This kind of reminds me of like the palm of a hand. Again, this is like an assemblage of different things. Things are just kind of pieced together. They're exaggerated, like with our eyes here. They're bigger than um, you might normally draw eyes, bigger than what I would normally draw eyes because I want them to be noticeable. So, and when I color them, I'm gonna also think about how colors can interact and how colors can make things seem bolder, they're more soft, by making things either more noticeable, are more um, more like it can blend in. So 
see if this has a nose also. have not caught on yet this is very like nonsensical thing so it have to make sense again it's like a big puzzle of random things very like made of imaginary of course because this is art and you can do whatever you want in art and create whatever you want so I can kind of see how things are broken up and how things are working with one another. And you can use whatever you want to color. You can use just colored pencils. You can use both colored pencils and crayons. You can use just crayons. Let's see. I'm going to start with this messy bun over here. I'm going to make the hair blue. As you're coloring, you can think about how you might typically color and how you might um, sort of experiment with your color. How differently can you color? How many coloring techniques can you include in this one assemblage here? What can you do to make it more bold, more noticeable? More bold so that it stands out more. More bold so that you can see how it is exaggerated. And as you do that, if you color, if you color like next to it or around it more softer, that might also pop more. You can kind of see how something that is more soft might might influence something that is more bold. It might seem more bold because it is next to something that is more soft. Set on the other side. And for the parts of the glasses, I'm going to make it yellow. So that just this is the bridge of the glasses. I'm actually going to color this yellow, fill up some of that empty space with color here. And if you have empty spots in your scribbles, you can also just color that in a bold color. Another 
idea that you can use when you are making your scribble piece. You can use um, themes and ideas like food. Food is another idea. I also mentioned nature earlier. You can do nature. There are lots of possibilities that you can do. Let's use a red and a color the outside of this cyclops eye over here red. If you would also want to create a challenge for yourself, you can create a whole color scheme. You can pick your colors before you start coloring, and as you're coloring, you can pull from those colors from that palette that you have made. Or, like I am already doing, you can just pick random colors and decide as you go. So there is my eye. I'm gonna color this a lighter red. Purple. I'm going to use purple to color this nose. Pull that up into the palm of this exaggerated hand here. It reminds me of a Christmas tree. of that hand green because it reminds me of the Christmas tree. It's a very nonsensical this looks like the thumb or not the thumb, the nail of one of the figures. Up there. So as I said before, whenever um, I was making each of my fe features with my Sharpie, I kind of wanted to start coloring so I could kind of see how things might stand out more, how things might sort of pop differently. And so I noticed that that looks like a nail. So I think that's pretty cool. Just a, just a smile. I get both from it. I dip over into my crayons for a little bit. Let's see. Can I pull it all in orange? Space here. And this here, to me, Looks like this face here is blowing a bubble, so I'm going to color that pink. Like a bubble gum situation. Bold pink. 
Your features, the things that you actually draw, do not have to be the only full parts. Like I said before, I'm kind of just coloring as I go. I don't have a real color scheme here, but if you want to use a real color scheme, you can. You can really challenge yourself with that, because that's also fun. Your colors are up to you. did with the um with the side of my glasses over here with the arm of my glasses if you want to draw things on the outside you can do that too things that kind of still um make sense to your entire piece but may go off outside of your scribbles you can really think outside of the box with that you can still utilize this space around your scribbles I didn't mention this before, but when you're doing your scribbles, I started out this way. If you're doing your scribbles and you're not really seeing anything or um, you're kind of stumped, you can keep turning your paper and see if you see anything different. That kind of might help you see things different or notice something that you maybe didn't know before. Or as you're drawing, one way you can keep flipping it and see things another way and kind of make your piece um, be seen from both, like for instance, this way or this way, upside down. You could kind of see different things each way you turn it. You can really kind of experiment with that and see how how many different perspectives, how many different sides and angles that you can get with that with turning your paper.
going to do more pink. some more gold purple, more noticeable purple. Spaces love to fill in around down here. I'm going to do an orange for up here. I also forget about the middle part of that eye. There we go. So once again, this is our scribble art. We scribbled, we kind of looked at it. We think, thought about what we can kind of hide in here, what we see. I saw a lot of eyes in mine, but we also talked about fluidity and how fluid our um, piece is. It's very, um, it's not like stoic. So meaning it's not like structured. It doesn't have like grid lines or anything. It's very like rounded. It's very organic in the sense of that we kind of just let our brains do whatever it thought. We also talked about boldness and exaggeration and how color can influence both of those. So how big and dramatic we can make something and how noticeable it is when you think about boldness and exaggeration. And we also talked about assemblage, which is what this entire piece is. Everything is kind of pieced together. It's like a big, big bold puzzle. And I hope you guys think more. Obviously, there are tons of possibilities with this. You can make scribbles and turn your paper and think about different things that you see and make off of that. And I hope you guys are just that, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.